welcome all to our channel gtech fluent our today's topic number 5 in entity framework core video tutorial series is how to query into the entity framework core so in this video we will discuss and understand the basic query so it will include the loading the all data or the records will get the single record and will add the query for the filtering the record next we will see when to use include and then include next we will see as no tracking method and we will see the example of the each one so let's start and first we see what are the basic query we have so entity framework core uses the language integrated query so that is nothing but the link queue to query data from the database so link queue allow us to use c sharp or the dot net language as per your requirement to write the strongly type query based on your the context and the entity class so query into the entity framework core remains the same as into the entity framework seeks to load the entities from the database so it provide the more optimized sql queries and we have ability to include c sharp or vb dot net functions into the link queue to entities query so now let's see what is mean by the include and then include so include method specify the related object to include into the particular query result set so it can be used to retrieve the some information from the database and also want to include related or relational data or the entities from the entity framework core so the example shown on the screen where we are retrieving all the student record but along with the student we need student address details so we need to use include method to specify that we need to load the student address along with the student data so whenever you want to load the all the relational data for the particular entity then you need to use include method now let's see what is mean by the then include so the include method work quite well for the list object but what if there we need for the multiple level of the dependency or the multiple level of the references for example student have the student addresses and each address might belong to the particular city so we need a object or the city details for the particular uh, result of the student so entity framework has a new extension method that is then include you can drill down through the relationship including the multiple layer of the related data using the then include method for example in this case we have included the student address but the student address also having the city information so we need a city data as well so the hierarchical relationship between the object then we need to use the accordingly then include in future there is suppose city having the state so you need to use then include and you need to include the state as well so as per the relation between the entities you need to use or choose between include and the then include so now let's see what is mean by as no tracking method so before understanding the as no tracking method let's understand what is mean by the change tracking in the entity framework the context is responsible for tracking the changes done into the particular object so the correct update is done into the database when we call save changes method of the context so when we retrieve the entity using the object query the entity framework puts this entity into the cache and track whatever changes are made on this entities until the save changes method is called so sometime we don't want to track some entities because the data is only used for viewing purpose and other operation such as insert update delete are not done so for example you require the student data or the student list so that is the list purpose or viewing purpose so the as no tracking extension methods returns a new query and the return entity will not be cached by the context or you can say the db context or the object context this means that entity framework does not perform any additional processing or storage of that particular entities that is written by the query additionally the add no tracking method can be save both execution time 
and memory usage so it will improve the application performance applying this option really become important when we retrieving the large amount of data from the database so now let's switch to the visual studio and see the example of this concept one by one so we are in our project which we have created for this video tutorial series so this project we have created while explaining the code first approach so we have the migration entities over here so let's add one folder here we'll call that folder name is services inside that we'll add one interface click on add new item interface give the name i student contract enter make the interface public so first we required to get the single record of the students so we need to return student entity from here so let's use entity and we'll call that method as get student and we'll get the parameter as a id next we require the all the record of the student so we'll call it as a list of student and we'll call it as get all student okay so now we have defined the one interface so we required one service that implement this interface so let's add one service here class student service dot cs enter and we need to implement this interface over here let's implement the interface make the class public so first we see how to get the single object from the context so to query the entity framework core we need to create the object of the context so for that we can use var context if you go to the context and you can see the context name the context name is school context now the student so use that school context and using context so here we need to use the link queue query to get the student object so student object we require student equals to context dot when you press the dot you will see the object or the db set which we have created under the context so we require the student object here student we require the student for the particular id so where we need to provide the where condition where if you see we need to use the link queue using c dot c where id equal to equal to id uh, if you notice we are getting the error let's check the error so it's saying cannot implicitly convert type for i queryable to student object so for that you need to either use one of these methods so we have the first or default single or default you have the first method also or single also so if you want to understand the difference between this method you can comment on this video so we will create the video for this separate so for now we will use the first or default so now we will getting the student object here and from here we will simply return the student so this method will return the single object for the particular student or the particular id which you have provided now we need to return the list of the student so let's go here create the context object similar way so now instead of student object we need to get the list here so student and we'll call it as a students and similar way context dot students you require and we need to use to list extension method to get the list of the student here and we need to return the students so now in this way we will getting the list of the student and the single object so now we will add one more method here to get the all the student list whose name equal to the let's say john so let's add one more method here and the return type of that method is 
list itself and here we'll call get all student by name and we'll get the name of the student here and if you come here we need to implement that so similar way we need to create the context class we'll get the list object here list of the student and we'll call the student context dot student so here we need to find out or filter out the record who name is equal to let's say what are the parameter value for the particular method so the name dot equals so as we are comparing the string so we are using the equals and we'll pass the parameters here you don't require the first object you require the all the list so for that you need to use to list and we'll simply return the student object over here so now in this way we have done to get the single record we have done to get the all the list of the record and the student by the name or you can say the whose name or student having the name which is passing for the particular method these are the example of the basic query in let's see while getting the all student i need student address also we need to use include method so here if you type we need to use include so but include is available under the entity framework core so you need to use that with the help of using we need to use entity framework core and we need to include the student address here so whenever all the student will be fetched at that time we will getting the student list as well as the address which belong for the particular student so now one more thing here we don't required to be track the changes for the particular context by the entity framework core so as we discuss we need to use as no tracking method before to list dot as no tracking to as we discuss this will not track the changes so if you go to the definition of this method you will find disabling the change tracking and it is useful for the read only scenario because it's avoid the overhead of the setting up the change tracking so you we can use this as per your requirement to avoid the overhead or the improve the performance of the application so in our next video we will see how to use this entity framework core example with our existing uh, asp.net core application and we'll get the data from the entity framework core and we'll display into the our asp.net core mvc application so please let us know if anyone has any query or a doubt we will meet in our next video thank you